So, it had to have been at least two years ago that I um, uploaded this video that I, I believe I titled Diana, My Mother and Me. I would have to look, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it was titled. And I hesitated before making that video. This is what I remember about it. Like, I just remember really kind of debating are people, do they even care? Like, are, is anybody going to appreciate, like, my adoration of Diana, Princess of Wales, and how profoundly her, her passing affected me? Um, but I, I kind of said to myself, you know, you, you can't just sort of present folks with the finish line without sort of taking them through the marathon, if you will. You know, it, it's it's more about the journey than the destination. And if we, um, if the purpose of all of this is for us to get to know each other better, then, you know, how can you really appreciate where I am if you don't necessarily understand and or know where I've been? And so, recently, um, I experienced... The world experienced the loss of Joan Rivers. And tonight, um, they aired the E! Entertainment News Fashion Police tribute to Joan Rivers, which is really the first public appearance of her daughter, Melissa Rivers, since Joan's untimely passing. And, um... And I have not been okay with this. Joan was 81 years old, and I was not ready to say goodbye. For, you know, it's so cliche, but I grew up on Joan Rivers. I did, and Joan Rivers has typically been the... Oh, God, where do I even start with this? Joan Rivers was the one kind of safety net, safe space, that no matter how badly my mother and I argued, she was one thing we could always agree on, was just this mutual shared love of her work, of, of her her character, her joie de vivre, her you know, irreverent outlook on, on life, her self-deprecating humor. That was our safe space, was discussing her. And I mean, from the time I was so young, I remember Joan's daytime talk show. I remember Can We Talk and Gossip, Gossip, Gossip. Like, I, I vividly remember all of this. And I was just so astounded by the, the, the chutzpah, the bravery that it took to just lay it out on the line. I mean, no holds barred, no hesitation, no filter whatsoever. As they're saying nowadays, no chill. Um, and when beginning the process of my transition, I really did begin to think about what kind of woman I wanted to be. And I, I, I worry about saying this because I really don't want, like, the sensitivity police to, like, jump on this video and attack me. Um, because I realize that, you know, women, including myself, are, are multifaceted. And, and it, it, I don't want to present, like, this myopic viewpoint of, you know, you have to be one way. Um, when, when there are certainly layers of identity that one can adapt to their own life. But... I do believe, and this may be an antiquated viewpoint, but I do believe that, you know, many women that I know sort of want to be remembered by an adjective. You know, she was so fill-in-the-blank. Um, and when I realized that waif and supermodel were probably not going to be part of my equation, um, I knew that I had a knack for making people laugh. Or at least shake their head and, and, and kind of disbelief at what I just said, you know? I, I Even in that little space in your head, if you're not actually laughing out loud, that little part of your brain that goes, that was funny. Um, I had that. I knew that I had that. I, I've always sort of been innately um, wry and sardonic 
and um, I I have a I can't tell a joke to save my life, but I'm really kind of razor sharp when it comes to like observational humor, and so uh, I really I studied. I studied the greats, for me the greats, you know. Um, the first love of my life, comedically speaking, was and, and has always been Gilda Radner. Um, just because great, unbelievable physical comic. I mean, the, the her mastery of improv, everything like that. But I mean, and, and because I, I she was the first that I really, like, wanted to epitomize from seeing her on SNL. Um, but right after that was Joan. It was always Joan. It was always Joan. And, you know, and I'm taking this so hard. And I realize on some level that I'm I'm probably conflating Joan's death with the death of my grandmother because it was really... My grandmother died July 29th, and, and Joan just passed away. Um, and I get it. I do. But my love of Joan was and is incredibly real. And I really have not handled this... Well, you know, you hear about an 81-year-old woman passing away and you go, oh, she had some great years. Oh, she was, so, you know, 81. That's a wonderful day. Well, fuck that. Fuck all of that. Excuse my language, but really seriously, fuck that. Because that lady was not done. She wasn't done. She had so much left in her. Y'all, hold on one second. Hey, y'all, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, in the midst of working here. So, yeah, it, it's just, <sighs> this was not a woman who was willing to go quietly into that good night. She was, you know, still so relevant, still so now. And, and to me, that's a big part of what makes this so tragic because I, you know, down to the last fashion police, I was watching, I was glued and um, it's just, it's, it's horrible. And I guess for me, it's a little bit personal because, you know, I can draw some parallels. You know, I'm an only child the same way Melissa is. One day I'll, I'll be standing over my mother, you know. One day my mother will be that age that, that you have to start really critically thinking about things like that. And, and I don't know how one prepares for that time you know as you grow older your your parents become less these figureheads and and become more human to you and i'm starting to experience that now if i tell you how old my mother is she will find a way to have me disintegrated <laughs> but Especially after my grandmother's funeral, when, when the family got together, I became conscious of the responsibility that we have to our parents, you know, honor thy mother and father and whatnot. I personally feel they should be honored if they're honorable, but um, the whole thing just has me thinking, and, you know, as to lose to lose Joan the world is a little less funny and I'm gonna miss her I'm gonna miss her I'm gonna miss somebody I've never met and I knew this was gonna happen it's so silly I mean this is not somebody who knew me but I was so affected by her damn it I was so deeply affected and moved and inspired by her life. <laughs> and should Melissa Rivers ever see this video, please know that you have my undying gratitude for your generosity in sharing your mother with the world. That's really all I wanted to say, y'all. I'm, I'm now a teary, weepy mess. Um, but I loved her, and uh, I just thought I would share. Oh. 
I will talk to y'all soon. Thanks for listening. Really. One love.